This week on Kentucky Afield. We're back in the stand, this time hunting the woods and looking to punch another tag. Got a deer about 60 yards dead in front of me. Next. That's all the dogs, I'm gonna get checkers and uh, That's it. I got a feeling we're gonna have to grab a shotgun because they're already in there getting after We're it. out with a pack of beagles and they're on the hunt for cottontails. Oh, there he is, on the outside. Then. Oh, no. We'll find out how controlled burns benefit native wildlife. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! My first musket. <laughs> Say Leo! Yeah, we're here to get the keeper! Here it goes! Boom! Oh, oh. Oh. Wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. If you're like me and you like to archery hunt, Kentucky is a great place to live. With an archery season that lasts over four months long, it's also a great way to fill the freezer. Well, walking into the woods, I am literally in range right now of a big healthy doe. She's kind of checking us out. Making this switch, you know, this is about the time of year, it's October, where we've been hunting primarily bean fields as the food source, but the acorns are really starting to fall. Early in the year before the season, I put two deer stands up and I haven't been in this stand yet all year. It does have bean fields kind of out in the front and behind it, but it's also in the woods where there's some acorns, some other nut trees that are producing and dropping, so that should be pulling some deer in. If I see a buck, I may try to get him curious, use these antlers a little bit. I hope the deer is starting to move. Get in there and see if we can't make it happen. Oh, well, it's still early. We 
we still may get a chance at that buck. But I tell you what, I'm pretty excited to get a really clean, good shot at the doe. That's going to make for some really good eating this whole entire winter. I'm thinking about some jerky. I'm pretty excited about it. Oh, oh, here comes another one. There must have been two. Here comes another one right here. It's going to stay on the top side. It's so early. I definitely have one deer down. If I get a really good shot to take a second one, I'll do it. But I'm only going to take the shot if it's a for sure shot. Well, my buck never showed up. But that's okay, you know. Got very lucky early in the hunt to make a really good shot on the doe right here in front of me. We ended up seeing a lot of deer after that, just no bucks deer are just worried about feeding. This is what makes it so exciting. If you see big numbers of deer, they tend to be moving around as soon as the temperature cools off. They're getting to the point now they're getting in the woods because of these acorns. They've been falling around us. I'm so happy to have that doe. I know it's right here. I know it's a good shot. Great hunt, no bucks, but that's okay. There's a good feeling about having that buck tag still in your pocket and a lot of season left. I'm here talking with John Hass, who's the Deer and Elk Program Coordinator. The 2021 deer season is well underway. Tell me a little bit about how the season's gone so far. Yeah, so we had a great month in September. As we know, we had one of our highest harvests ever in 2020, so we're just below that. But this September, we had some great weather towards the end. And how about our muzzleloader season and youth firearm season? Yeah, youth was a little bit down. If anybody uh, was around that weekend, it was about 80, 80, 85 those days, and the wind was blowing a little bit. Just the weekend after for muzzleloader, we had a big front go through that Friday before, uh, but generally had a big cool down. Had just some great weather that weekend, and, and the harvest indicates that. You know, I want to remind people who, you know, if you got out and you didn't have the greatest experience during youth season due to the weather, during the regular modern firearm season, which is coming up it's next week, mm -hmm. that is a great opportunity to get a youth out there and take a deer. Give me the season dates again because I know we're a week out. Yeah, so it's opening up uh, Saturday, November 13th and runs 16 days through November 28th. During that time, you need to check your rules and regulations, mm -hmm. uh, and, and but there are some things this year that are a little bit different. And if you're hunting in a couple of counties in far western Kentucky, you need to be aware of it. Absolutely, so we've got a CWD surveillance zone in far west Kentucky. So any hunter that's hunting in Callaway, Marshall, Graves, Fulton, and Hickman County during modern gun season and our late muzzleloader season coming up will need to take their deer to one of our 17 mandatory check stations. So we're trying to make this process as simple as we can for hunters. It will greatly help us kind of be ahead of the curve on CWD. We're going to be checking every deer that's harvested in those counties. Hunters can simply go online, find their closest check station. It'll take about five to ten minutes. We're going to have kind of a drive-through set up in those places with our staff working those. Okay. I've been spending a little bit of time in the stand. We're already seeing bucks chasing does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The rut lasts for quite a while. How do you think we're going to hit the rut this year? I think it'll be pretty good. Usually November 17th is that magic day in my mind when we look at our, at our fetal measurements and that kind of stuff. That's about the peak every year. So we're mm -hmm. going to be hitting it just right. So it should be really, really yep. good. Let's hope for some good weather. Mm -hmm. So for individuals that, uh, you know, maybe they don't think about deer hunting until right before the season comes, yep. tell me some things that they need to be aware of. Yeah, definitely. The biggest thing, what I check and kind of obsess about in my hunting gear, make sure you got that hunter orange. Mm -hmm. I always throw an extra set in there because it mm -hmm. seems like somebody shows up without a hat to, to deer camp or something like that. And then have your harvest log. That's an important thing. You can print that out from our website or my profile. And just understand that that needs to be filled out before you move that deer from the woods. Mm -hmm. Secondly, 
kind of figure out your plan for tail checking the animal. I tend to do it right there when I'm sitting in the field and just get it on that harvest log and you're done. Uh, but you've got until midnight of the day of harvest to complete tail check if you don't have cell service at your hunting location. Well, I hope everyone out there has a very productive and safe deer hunting season. I'm looking forward to catching up with you at the end of the season, see how it turned out. Absolutely, looking forward to it. What is the most exciting sound in the outdoors? Well, many will tell you it's the sound of a pack of beagles hot on the trail of a rabbit. This is a piece of property that it looks dictate your performance for the there day. There should be some rabbits here. So we're going to hear yes, some sir. barking today and some gunshots. We'll <laughs> definitely hear some barking like it. <laughs> well, all right, let's let's uh, let's start getting your dog right. uh, geared up here. So you got Wiz first, it looks like. This is Wiz. He's a six-year-old. Okay. This is Indy. She's a four-year-old. Okay. Now, this is Callie. All right. She's a, she'll be four years old coming up. Okay. But this is Checker's mama. Okay. That's Sissy. She's a six-year-old female. Now, this is DB. All right. He's a four-year-old. Okay. And this is Big Daddy. He is yeah. a Big Daddy. He's a four-year-old as well. He's litter mate to, D, to DB. Now, what, how many inch beagle would you call this? He's about a 16, we'll say Kentucky 15. How's that? Okay. <laughs> that works. <laughs> so that's that's all the dogs. I'm going to get checkers and uh, it. I got a feeling we're going to have to grab a shotgun because they're already in there getting after it. <laughs> That's checkers right there, ain't it? That little, it's kind of uh -huh. a quick, short bite. Yeah. yeah. Dale, did you get that, buddy? Yeah, I got it. Well, we got one. Well, good. Well, I'm just glad to see checkers got in there with them. She ran good. You did it. Nice <laughs> job. <laughs> All right. Get ready. Checkers, Big Daddy, good boy, dead, dead, sissy, dead. Get these dogs in here, get them on another one somewhere. You and I kind of met on accident. Yes, we did. And yes, uh, we did, Jim. I could tell immediately that you were extremely passionate about it. I mean, you spend, we're talking two to three hundred days a year. Yes. Working and training dogs. Yes. If it wasn't for an understanding wife, I wouldn't be able to do this, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, they got it, they got it, right here. Sis, oh. sis come here. Good girl. Yeah. I saw the hide, but I, I couldn't see the rabbit. They sure found it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good job. Yes, sir. Nice job, dog. Good boy, good dad. Dead. <laughs> All right, let's get another one. Dead, 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 dead. Let's go. This is my first rabbit of the year, and uh, by the looks of things, it won't be my last rabbit of the day. Seeing a bunch of rabbits, dogs are doing great, and I'm having a blast. There we go. There he is. Going up the hill. Too far away from me to shoot. Up there toward you, Bill, here it comes. There they go. There they go. They're right on. Yeah, here he is. There he is, right here, Will. He was right here, headed up the hill. I got him for you. All right. We are blessed to be out here today, having fun, good friends, good company, just having a good time. You get a really good pack of dogs like this, you've owned over hundreds and you count the people you've hunted with and their dogs, you get, to, you get to kind of pick what you like about certain dogs and try to get exactly what you want out of a beagle. Yeah, I try to, uh, I try for the hunt first, you know, and then the second thing I like is a, is a dog that has, boy, has some sense to it. Yeah. And then I want one that's got the bottom end, you know, it's got some stamina that's gonna stay in, you know, and handle all day hunting. Yeah, yeah. You know. Let's walk on up there. Let's do it. Come on, let's go, dog. Right here, right here, come 
go chase you along, buddy. Tell you what, these dogs beat us to this little field, and they actually got broke up. We had a we had a race going that direction, and two dogs broke off and ran that rabbit right to you. That's right, right, right to me. Almost on the mound with us here. <laughs> It coming up out. here to check you out. Worked out just like it was supposed to. If you'd have had a little bit of sag in your pocket, I believe you'd have jumped in. Went right in there, you know <laughs> That's good sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> they get right on you. I tell you what, that's a hard shot to make, though, when they get that close. Yeah. That, that pattern you're shooting about that big. <laughs> I'd rather have that element of a surprise, though. If I have much time, I'm, I'm usually going to miss. <laughs> I, I like to pull right up and go. Yeah, there you go. Watch out there. Tony. Look at this. Where's he? Oh, there he is. on the outside. There he goes. That rabbit was within five feet of me, and I saw it, but the dogs were pushing it this way, and I thought if it got out here in the open, we'd get a good shot. But that rabbit pulled a slip on me. <laughs> Yeah, there's two. Two different ones. Did you get that one, Dale? I think so. I'm not 100% sure. He ducked in the briars with well, a shot. Yeah, I got fur. I got a bunch of fur, but no rabbit. I bet they're back on it right here. Well, the dogs spent a lot of time in here working and finally worked right into this point. And when they finally did get a rabbit up, we got two rabbits going. One this way, one that way. I, th I think we got them both, I ain't sure right now. That rabbit's gotta be here somewhere. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. They got I, him. I heard the, I heard the bunny. Let, let go. Let go. Quit, Indy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice job, Dale. Did y'all get that rabbit? Yeah, we got him. That'd never, that'd never be good eating. Yeah. Because we we uh we didn't we weren't too close to him. <laughs> no, he just barely yeah. had any pellets in him. You can yeah. see the shots flying up all around him. I you think you had a heart attack. <laughs> How many times did y'all shoot? <laughs> all that area, the dogs worked and he got it right here at this point and two squirt out at the same time. Yeah. I'd say they run them down here. That's great. Hey. Yes, it was. I knew there was gonna be a bunny in there. Had to be. You know what? I have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anybody complained of that. For that that was a, that was a very very good day of rabbit hunting, and you know, we let way more than that run, so we didn't hurt the place none, did we? No, not at all. That was a perfect day. It was absolutely a perfect day. What is the most cost-effective natural way to improve your habitat? Believe it or not, it is fire. We're at the Taylorsville Lake Wildlife Management Area. This is called the Briar Ridge Unit of Taylorsville Lake. It's a 1,800 acre section of the management area. Today, we're gonna be putting fire to 580 acres of that area. Okay, we use uh, drip torches that have a mixture of diesel and gasoline. It's on the end has a wick, so they light the wick with the match and it drips lit fuel onto the ground. It has a little loop nozzle on the end. However you set your drip setting, there's an air vent on the drip torch. Fire uh, it serves multiple purposes. It encourages growth of the warm season grasses in our fields. And it also will help us fight invasive species. We have six crews total. There are four igniter crews that are putting fire on the ground. We have a support crew and we have a, a forestry crew that is suppression fire along our fire breaks. And then we also have a crew that is on the water that will be uh, igniting the woods from the boat. Right in the hole. 
we're here today at Taylorsville Lake uh, shooting flares off the boat to uh, try to help the progression of a prescribed fire we have going on here. The number of flares we're going to shoot off today will probably range somewhere between 50 to 100 depending on uh, the spread of the fire uh, as, as we go and how much of the fire backs down. A lot of these animals will run for cover and they'll hide. Deer and rabbits and turkey and quail and squirrels will all be able to run away and they'll get out ahead of the fire. And it's real common whenever we're burning on even private lands or public lands, you'll start seeing those animals start moving out in advance of the fire before the fire even gets to them. It's pretty hilly terrain, and it could be potentially dangerous to send the crew up and down a hill. Once a crew gets an area burnt, they will backfire down towards the lake, and the crew from the water, they will set the flares. They will reach from the shoreline. They will put fire up to the flares to match them together. We have some students from EKU. The students, they all have their training in fighting fire and prescribed burns and most of them is their first time out, so they're more gonna be shadowed and, and mentored on the burn. My name is Renee Steinberger. Yeah, my major is uh, wildlife management with a minor in biology. I'm out here today because uh, I'm red card certified and I love putting fire on the ground. The purpose of this fire is to increase oak hickory regeneration and open up some of the woodlands for, for more small game habitat. You will be increasing forest floor cover for smaller creatures like squirrels. Uh, in the woodlands and in the open areas within the woodlands, you'll be increasing early successional habitat for things like rabbits and turkey poults. Really, all, all the animals will benefit from this. You'll be increasing woody browse for things like deer. A lot of the animals here in the eastern U.S. have evolved on a fire landscape, and uh, they've come to exist, in some cases rely, on management activities. And prescribed fire is one of the methods that allows us to manage the largest chunks of property at one time. Well, this is beneficial. It restores the, the environment back to an oak hickory setting that we're looking for. We're looking for a productive forest, nice healthy grass fields, and it helped game and non-game wildlife both. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here we have six-year-old Blake who got his first gobbler this year during the youth turkey season. Nice job. Check out this nice buck that was taken by Hunter Willis. This here was his very first buck ever, and it was a 10-pointer taken from Adair County. Here we have 10-year-old Hayden Amberge who took this nice six-point buck in Knott County during the youth firearm season. Congratulations. Here we have Tom Roberts of Grayson County with a nice nine-pointer that he took during the muzzleloader season. Check out eight-year-old Gavin Jesse here with his first deer, a seven-point buck, taken in Taylorsville, Kentucky with a crossbow. Nice job. Here we have four-year-old Branson Mead with his first fish ever, a nice bluegill that he caught while fishing with his dad on Cave Run Lake. Here we have 11-year-old Jacob Beeler who took this nice eight-point buck and a scope to the nose on the opening day of muzzleloader season. Good job. Here we have Joe Brack Lawyer of Shelby County who took this nice nine-point buck using a crossbow. Check out this nice buck that was taken by six-year-old Braylon Hicks. This deer was taken in Meade County while hunting with a crossbow. Nice job. Check out this beautiful smallmouth bass that was caught by Cooper Ambergy. This fish was caught at the Kentucky River near Cornettsville. Nice fish. Check out two-year-old Raylan Muncie. She caught her first largemouth bass while fishing in a farm pond in Laurel County. Check out this nice gobbler taken by Delaney Haddix. This was her first turkey she called into 30 yards while hunting in Morgan County. Nice job. Kentucky's modern firearm season starts next Saturday, November the 13th. If you plan on hitting the woods, make sure you have a hunter's orange hat, vest, and if you're hunting from a tree stand, always wear a safety harness. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. If you hold a Kentucky hunting or fishing license, then you have helped make possible Kentucky's wildlife management areas, places to hunt, fish, bird watch, or just let your mind wander. With nearly 100 dotting the Commonwealth, put wildlife management areas in your sights and see more of what makes Kentucky's outdoors outstanding. 
Get all the info online at fw.ky.gov. Let's go. More Kentucky Field is available at your fingertips. Whether by smartphone or computer, you'll find exclusive content and behind the scenes videos on our social media pages. Give us a like or follow to stay in the woods and on the water longer. When you subscribe to us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, just search Kentucky Field on your favorite app.